Good morning to our viewers here in Nigeria and across the continent. Thank you very much for joining us on uh, Breakfast Central this morning. As always, we have the next two hours to share with you the big conversations happening here in the country and bits and pieces in other parts of the continent. I am Osaogi Ogbawa. And I'm Joe Hansen, standing in definitely for Oliver Modi. And uh, today, as usual, the stories are rife. And most importantly, Nigerians are talking about the latest incidents that's taking place in different parts of the country. First off, uh, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Salary Review, uh, talking about the Senate um, looking to indeed approve and, of course, assent to the President, 300% uh, increase for the Chief Justice of Nigeria. For the President of the Court of Appeal, they also have an increment as well in terms of percentage. And not forgetting, too, you do have um, others who still make up the Nigerian uh, judicial system. But for me, I don't know what your thoughts are, but I think 300% at a time where uh, the Nigerian Labour, um, you know, Congress, uh, better still, is um, um, pushing to also have a review yeah. in terms of salary. But not bad. These are some of the conversations that we'll be looking at. By the way, you can uh, join us as the conversations indeed continue. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I, f I feel, you know, with the CGN story, there's obviously a lack of um, clarity. Um, it, it might also have a problem with timing. Um, now that we're having conversations, you know, with regards to the NLC and the minimum wage, um, so that the, the timing might, you know, be a little faulty, you know, but I've, I, I feel like there also needs to be a bit of clarity to know exactly what the figures are. You know, we, you know, see a lot of speculation with regards, you know, what they expected to earn, what they used to earn before. Um, I looked at what their annual salary was, you know, from the 2007 um, um, uh, template, you know, and, it, you know, of course, there was, an, there was an improvement in 2022 with the Boer administration, you know, that moved it up, you know, a little bit. So I, I feel like if there's some clarity, it might, it might ease the conversations, but it's, it's things that we would x-ray a little further. Um, we also have Mazzino joining us with Breakfast Headlines. Good morning, Mazzino. Hey, good morning, guys. Good to join you guys here for a, uh, what's it? It's a Thursday, isn't it? A Thursday morning. <laughs> I wanted to say something, Joe, regarding the salaries for CJN and officials. I do agree with uh, Osas here because it is actually, you and I did a bit of speculation ourselves. And when we came at the amount for per month, do you remember what we came up with? Now, these are just speculations, but I, I thought that that was rather okay at a time like this. Yeah. Like Osage said, it's just the timing. And yeah. I think we need a bit more awareness when it comes yeah. to these matters. Wow. The timing, the, the um, RMAFC, I think that's the name of the body, yeah. Revenue, yeah. Revenue Mobilization yeah. and uh, Fiscal Commission, um, I hope I got it right. Um, they, of course, you know, would determine you know, what exactly these uh, judges should earn. Um, there are two things that, of course, create the controversy. One of them is the timing, and then the second one is these speculations that, you know, the judges are being, you know, um, um, giving these salary increments, you know, to favor the current administration and all of that, you know, which is not necessarily true. You know, I, I, f I feel, again, if there is some clarity on these figures, it might help us understand. Mm -hmm. um, there was also a conversation that I saw a couple of, you know, from 2021 or 2022, where they put, you know, um, um, together the executive, the legislative and the judiciary, and they were comparing their salary scales and saying, you know, why does the legislative and so much more than the judiciary, you know? So these are some, some things that we probably, as a country, we need to have an honest conversation on and say, okay, you know, what what's the salary scale that wants people to own? Yeah. If I'm going to bring the um, legislative down, you know, to be on what judges are earning, then let's do that. If we're going to leave the judges up, let's do that. If we're going to have a, a you know standard that everyone is going to be on, then maybe we should do that. But aside that, you know, Mazino, there's also a conversation about Nigerians using bicycles. I've seen um, that um, the FRSC has been implored, or rather, is imploring Nigerians to use more bicycles. Oh my goodness! Uh, no, but for, uh, as a, you know, it, would, it wouldn't. Transportation. It wouldn't be the first time, Osage. It wouldn't be the first time. Didn't we have a senator who at one time actually attempted to uh, ride bicycles? He was successful until he was. I think he was. He was. Was he hit or something like that? But. I've always been one to advocate for physical, um, was it, I, I don't know what you want to call it, but I think it also helps you as a person yourself. And it also helps your pocket as well. But then again, you must also admit that the conditions are exactly not fair. If I have to ride all the way from where I live here every single morning, I don't think I'll be able to read the news at this point. <laughs> yeah, you know, but so yes, you, you do make a strong point, you know, with regards to the benefits of, you know, um, bicycle riding. You know, if we had more people that were, you know, involved with that, you know, mm -hmm. then we would have a fitter society, no doubt. But that is, 
a thing that individuals will take upon themselves, you know, you know, I mean, you're, you're going to decide if you want to exercise, you know, with bicycle riding or not. If you would decide that, okay, I've been driving for too long, I want to start riding bicycle between VI and Lecky, or Lecky and VI, or wherever it is that you work, um, that is an individual, it's, it's a personal decision, you yeah. know. Should our society have more bicycles? Maybe, maybe not. Do we have the infrastructure? Because, yeah. you know, the, the challenge that I have with these conversations or when these things are said by the FRS or any other agency is that they forget completely that it is the lack of certain infrastructure that makes these things not exist in our society. Possible. It's not because Nigerians just don't like them. Can, I, can the FRS also be told that we would like to also ride more trains? That would love to stop driving to work every day? People would like to leave Aja and get to VI in 10 minutes. Or in 15 minutes, people would absolutely love that if we have more trains. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah. the complete lack of transportation infrastructure in Nigeria should not be ignored. And they just blot out these statements every now and then. Nigerians should ride more bicycles. Yes, we would also love to have trains. We would love to have better transport in in infrastructure. We don't, mm -hmm. I mean, there's no bicycle, there's not even healthcare enough. To take care of injuries that would, you know, uh, would it, it you know, be, it, from it filled up by the nah. they should just. I mean, there's just so much. I mean, the, uh, the, the Lagos State, uh, I mean, Luth is equally filled up. Uh, the truth is, in reality, this is not possible. It's possible when it comes to statements being made because if you look at it, you know, I always ask myself this question Do you want to ride bicycles in Mushi? You know? A, a very busy suburb in Lagos. Do you want to ride bicycles in uh, on CMS? You know, where the, the, the drivers who drive the Danfo buses, of course, quotes, Danfo here means the regular transport uh, uh, mode system that we use, uh, yellow in color or oftentimes now white or green. Better still, you see how rough they are when it comes to driving. So mm -hmm. by the time you hear of uh, uh, that toll, you might want to yeah. have a rethink. Yeah, but the, the thing is, I know yeah. we need to go, but you know, the thing is, before, so before a society gets to a stage where people then use bicycles as an option, because listen, if you, if you know the amount of people, I'm using Lagos because that's where we are, the amount of people that need to move from one point to another in Lagos, and you put those bicycles on, bicycles on the road, mm -hmm. the road itself will be blocked with normal no, bicycles that we're talking about here. But before a society gets to that point where they, you know, now use bicycles as a mode of transportation, public or private trans transportation, whichever one it is, there's already certain things that are already laid down. Trains are available. It, it is now an option that you choose that, okay, I want to leave my car home. I'm not taking the train today. Let me ride my bicycle to work. But those things are already available before they do that. They already have la um, lanes that are wide enough to accommodate cars, accommodate BRT, accommodate the bicycles also. But we don't have any of that. We just have roads, you know, some of them without... I, I, I think we can, we can take a cue from um, our neighbor uh, neighbors, uh, Cotonou, um, just here. I mean, they do have lanes for, for yeah, um, Okada riders. Yeah. And it's been like that since for a long time. Uh, I think it's a lot of talk and no action. That's what we see here in Nigeria. But then again, so many things to discuss uh, in the course of uh, two hours. Uh, we're looking forward to have further conversation. We do understand what's going on in the northern states. Uh, we'll discuss that pretty soon. But then again, Amazino, mm -hmm. uh, kindly hold on as you bring to us breakfast uh, um, headlines. You're welcome. It's time for breakfast headlines. My name is Amazino Peel. Now... Let's begin by telling you that there is no time to waste for the Tripartite Committee on Minimum Wage. The committee reconvened on Wednesday to continue the wage negotiations less than 24 hours after the organized labor suspended the strike. The attendants were representatives of the federal government and organized labor. In the meantime, striking workers of the Delta State House of Assembly staff under the umbrella of Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria have suspended the strike embarked upon last Wednesday, but with a condition. The workers gave leadership of the House four days within which to resolve the impasse that led to the strike. The consequence of falling, or rather failing, is that the strike will resume without further notice. discuss with the state government and uh, His Excellency assured us that within the next 48 hours approval will be granted for the 
implementation of the consolidated legislative salary scheme for workers of the Delta State House of Assembly. So we decided to summon them to a meeting, inform them of the good. Now the Senate has approved the bill seeking improved salaries, allowances and fringe benefits for the Chief Justice of the Federation, CJN, Justice Ulukayo de Ariola and other justice office holders in Nigeria by 300% as the bill scaled third reading on Wednesday. The approval followed the adoption of a report by the Chairman Senate Committee on Judicial, Human Rights and Legal Matters, Mohamed Mungunu. The lawmaker said adequate remuneration will allow judicial officers to focus on their professional development without worrying about financial constraint. On a train traveling from Abuja to Kaduna has derailed at Asha sta uh, Station, leaving many passengers stranded in the federal capital territory. Recall that on May 26, an Abuja-bound train derailed along the Abuja-Kaduna route, leading to the passengers being stranded in the Jere area of Kaduna State. This marks the second instance in two weeks that the train has derailed. And away from that, the Nigerian Senate has considered a bill to establish the National Animal Husbandry and Ranchers Commission. The legislation seeks to address the prolonged conflicts between farmers and herders advocating for a nationwide ban on open grazing and the establishment of ranches. The proposed legislation, which was sponsored by Senator Titus Terega, representing Benway Northwest, sought to control and regulate cattle rearing ranching business across the country. And over now in South Africa, South Africa's ruling ANC said Wednesday is had, uh, it had reached out to rivals to form a government of national unity after failing to win an outright majority in last week's general elections. The final tally gave President Cyril Ramaphosa, um, Africa's, uh, African National Congress, 159 members in the 400-seat National Assembly, its lowest score in a general election. Um, the conversation is looking at the government of national unity because this is what the people of South Africa have said to us that uh, put together um, a, you know, a multi-party arrangement that works for the benefit of South, of South Africa. As to we, we have been meeting with all parties that are keen to contribute ideas on how we can collectively move our country forward to form a government that ensures national unity and stability in a country that continues the transformation of South Africa and safeguards our constitutional democracy. The national, these include meetings with delegations from the Ikata Freedom Party, the Economic Freedom Fighters, the Democratic and that's all on Breakfast Headlines. Back to Osas and, of course, Joe Hansen. Thank you so much, Mazino Appeal. Um, top stories there, as usual. And some of them will remain in the news for as long as we can imagine, especially the uh, derailing of the um, Abuja Kaduna train. This is uh, another time it's happening. We do recall the sad incidents that saw the death uh, of uh, that promising young uh, medical student who was shot and killed. And then the videos that indeed circulated during that time, and I could recall how we talked about it uh, extensively here on Breakfast Central, uh, where the kidnappers were being flogged and so on. And then, of course, the former Minister of Transportation back then, um, Rotimi Amici, had said he had asked the federal government to purchase certain security apparatus mm -hmm. or equipment, and it wasn't purchased. Then, you know, sometimes it's like we just wake up in the morning, brush our teeth, bathe, dress up, come, come on air, and say the same thing over and over again. Uh, and I, it I comes back in circles, and we say it again. I was going to ask you both, gentlemen, um, when the last time you ever traveled using the rails were, if at all you have ever, and what exactly is the reason why you might not have? Do well, you have I've, never, I've never been on a train. You've never been on a train? Do you, no, do you have mean, a reason exactly why? I mean, I've just never had any reason to, to be. I'm, I've not been to Ibadan, not that have I you know, decided to move from Kaduna to Abuja. I mean, I just haven't any, had any actual reason to, you know, well, I, except I'll tell you maybe one thing. tourism. I'll tell you one thing, that I, I would love to be on the trains, but I have a sense of insecurity when it comes to the Nigerian uh, railway system. That's the only thing that keeps me off of them.
But apart what? from that, I think if you provide security and assurance that these machines are going to work properly, that you'll have more people actually investing yeah. using this as a means of transportation. What? But just my little thought there. Yeah, and of course your feelings are you know normal. I'm yeah. sure a lot of people feel the same way, you know. But this particular case now, I'm not sure if, it, if it's a security challenge, you know, or if it's it's a um, train infrastructure challenge. The the rails maybe need to be checked by those managing. Uh, mm -hmm. The uh, um, railway lines, you know, maybe there was some there's some mechanical challenge or some technical challenge. They they probably need to take a closer look at it, you know. But you know, in my opinion, I think you know we, we could have done better, you know, with the level of you know railway infrastructure yeah. that we have. Um, do questions need to be asked about the previous administration and the investments that they made, if not just previous administration, all the you know administrations and investments that they made into Nigeria rail lines? Yeah, questions need to be asked. Could we have gotten better, you know, infrastructure? Absolutely. Um, do we need to do better? Absolutely. But for now, um, I, I just hope that they, they're able to properly manage this one so that it doesn't lead to, you know, um, um, fatality, you know, the next time that this happens, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, in Nigeria. Oh, we'll see. On a lighter note, gentlemen, just wanted to note um, that there's a lot of testosterone in the, new, in the room today. I mean, where's Olive? <laughs> She's somewhere. <laughs> She'll be back. Thanks for joining Please, us. Please, we, we want her back. <laughs> Thanks to you, Yavazina. Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you very much, Asa. All right. And thanks for staying with us here on Breakfast Central. Stakeholders in Nigeria have called for far-reaching reforms in the nation's electoral process to actually ensure that it improves credibility of future polls. Now, this was announced during a session organized by the Electoral Hub in Nigeria's capital city, Abuja, where stakeholders made far-reaching recommendations to improve the nation's electoral process. Our man, Amadine Uye reports in this package. Despite already spending 25 years of uninterrupted democracy, political experts say Nigerians are still ignorant of the political process and the results coalition process after elections. People do not, there are so many politicians and political parties who do not even know that for you to be declared as a president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, that you must call majority of lawful votes cast and also get this ge geographical spread. And that if nobody gets that geographical spread, another election will be conducted with the same threshold. So I think that there's lack of knowledge in terms of some of the things we do. At this session organized by the Electoral Hub in Nigeria's capital, Abuja, political stakeholders in Nigeria say there is still so much to be achieved to grow the nation's democracy. The Inter-Party Advisory Council, a coalition of several political parties in the country, say Nigerians must be encouraged to participate in the process. They also use the opportunity to advocate for local government autonomy. Citizens should be encouraged to actively participate in grassroots politics that guarantees free, fair, and credible local government elections. It is in view of this that IPAC also demands for local government autonomy. INEC must be strengthened to discharge its statutory duties and be truly independent to conduct credible elections. Other stakeholders present give far-reaching recommendations to officials of Nigeria's electoral body present, saying the nation's political process is in dire need of reforms at all levels. We must provide exemplary, transparent, and credible leadership in political party administration and call elected public officers to order if they deviate from the manifesto of their respective party. It is time to sanitize our political process. Inter internal party democracy has uh, been the bane of, uh, of our democracy because uh, it is for sure that uh, our political parties have not uh, gotten it right and uh, we continue to have uh, inter-party inter -party squabbles within our political parties, most especially within uh, the forefront uh, pol political parties. The Electoral Hub also unveiled a book on election management in the country aimed at deepening Nigeria's electoral process. In Abuja for News Central, I am Amadin Uyi. And of course, uh, thanks to Amadi Nui for that uh, report. The conversations concerning strengthening Nigeria's electoral process would always continue. Now, the hearing of the case challenging the reinstatement of M.I. Mohamed Sanusi II before Justice Abdullahi Mohamed Liman has been stalled. 
The Ghana State Federal High Court, where the case was scheduled for Monday, June 3rd, was closed for business, both fiscally and virtually, due to the now-suspended nationwide organized labor strike. Meanwhile, on Tuesday, Kano State Governor Abba Yusuf called on the Nigerian Bar Association to find a lasting solution to the issue of uh, conflicting judgments uh, issued by judges. Well, recall that there had been two conflicting court orders in the Kano Emirship dispute. Uh, Justice S.A. Amobeda of the Federal High Court ordered the eviction of Emir Muhammadu Sanusi II from the Kofa Kudu Palace and directed the police to ensure all rights and privileges due to the 15th Emir of Kano Aminu Bayero were accorded to him. In contrast, Justice Aisha Damo Liu of the State High Court restrained the police and other security agencies from evicting Sanusi from the palace, uh, restrained Bayero from presenting himself as the aim of Kano, and also ordered his eviction from Nasarawa Palace. Now, Governor Yusuf made uh, this, uh, his appeal at an NBA conference in Kano City where Muhammad um, Sanusi II was also invited, a move that has been interpreted by many as a sign that the NBA recognizes uh, uh, Sanusi II as the lawful monarch of the Emirate. Well, let's also tell you that uh, this continues to play out, yet we will be looking into this situation. Well, the dethroned Emir Bayero continues to reside at the Nasarawa Mini Palace with a heavy security presence still active. Joining us at this moment as we discuss uh, looking at the uh, legality and more is legal practitioner Toho um, Oserevoja. I hope I got that name and that pronunciation correct. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you. Well, um, it's Oseruoja. Oseruoja. Okay. Well, it's, I'm sure, I'm sure. it's a good attempt. It's a good attempt. I'm sure Osarugo Osar will be looking at mm. me like, okay. really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what I've got to do yeah. right <laughs> You know, sometimes, uh, sometimes when names are called, particularly when it has to do with our traditional name, Absolutely. you know that uh, we tend to, because it has to do with some... Um, how would I put it now? Tradition and the language of yeah, the thing. So yeah. uh, some mistakes are allowed. Okay, that's right. But with time, with time, perfection will become um, will become the order of the day. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's 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 focus on our conversation now, which takes us straight to uh, what's been going on there, uh, the tussle, especially of the emirship. Now, what do you make of the uh, body language of the Nigerian Bar Association in this recent update? Well, I, I'm not in a position to speak for the um, for the Nigeria Bar Association, particularly when it has to do with the Kano branch, because I'm not authorized to do so. But I will speak uh, based on the uh, uh, legal aspect of it. If you look at it carefully, I if we go through the memory leak, which uh, we try to forget, similar issues. I'm not talking about the NBA inviting the current Emir of Kano, uh, the current Emir of Kano. Similar issues happen back in 1963 when it has to do with the detriment of uh, Muhammad uh, Sanusi, the Emir of Kano then. And if you look at it carefully, you discover that issue, and I've, I, keep, I keep saying it, and I've, um, uh, I think uh, it has precedence that issue of shift NC affair that has to do with the Emirate Council or that has to do with any shift NC affair is within the conference and jurisdiction of the state government. And I will still tell you categorically, as it is today, the Emir of Kanu or the other Emirate that was pre that has been um, strapped are product of law made by the state as of assembly, irrespective of the process that was taken, irrespective of how the law was made, in as much it has fulfilled the the legal uh, framework for it to be from for it to be transformed from B to become law, it remains law until it is repealed or it is interpreted to be in contrast or in contravention with a provision of the constitution or natural justice. So as it is now, if you look at the, the Kanu State Emirate Council law of 2024 that repeals the other laws that came into being in 2019. Remember, before 2019, there was only one Emirate Council in Kanu State. Do you understand? And before, before the 9th March 2020, uh, Emir Sanusi was the Emir of Kanu before he was dethroned by the then um, uh, the former governor of Kanu State. And all these are as a result of laws. 
I don't know if you get it. These are as a result of laws made by the state as of assembly. So I'm not in a position to speak for the Kanu uh, for the Kanu MBA, but if you look at it carefully, legally, as it is, we should look at the law. And I'm speaking from the law. All right, so so I mean the, the involvement of the um, second court order, you know, that seems to um, want the reinstatement of Emma um, um, Bayero, you know, are you saying that that court order may not have any legal standing? Well, um, the, first of all, you should look at there are three conflicting court orders. Do you understand? The three conflicting court orders, you will now ask yourself the question, why are these orders coming into play? There was an order of 20 of, uh, on the 24th of May, if my memory will, stand, uh, will serve me right, do you understand? We yeah. stopped the Kanu uh, state government for implementing the law that has been passed. Do you understand? Then you see another conflicting order from on the 27th of May that also affirmed the detriment of and the um, and scrapping of the uh, five, uh, the four other four Emirates, merging it to the Kanu Emirates, and also asking the eviction of the dethroned Emir, the alleged dethroned Emir. Then, if you look at the other one again, do you understand? So, at this particular point in time, anarchy is the order of the day. Which of the order to respect? But we should not forget that when it comes to shift uh, title affair, the state high court has jurisdiction over the matter. But when there are two equal equity, first in time prevail, which I'm of the opinion, that's why I, I think I'm of the opinion that the federal high court order would have been respected, would have been respected for that then order it is, whether it is set aside or it is appealed. Do you understand? But this one that they are conflicting order now, you will see that the federal high court earlier granted in 24 May 20, uh, 2024 will be, seen, will be seen as the first in time which would have been implemented or respected. But you can see that the three of them, anybody can decide to go for whoever, which, who, who, um, the order they want to, to respect. And but, they have legal backing for it because this is an order of court. This is an order of court. It's there for you to see which one suits your, your, your gain at that particular point in time. Yeah, you know, all of this really just, you know, seems to paint, you know, the picture of where the Nigerian judiciary is you know, at, at this point. Um, and, you know, if, if we're having three different court um, orders, you know, on one particular case, you know, it, it, it's, it's such a mess, don't you think? Well, uh, I, I don't think so, because if you could see, if you if you listen to uh, activities surrounding the, uh, the crisis, you discover that the chief justice of Nigeria, in his fatherly wisdom and being the uh, chief head of the judiciary in Nigeria, has summoned the chief judge of the federal high court and the Kanu state, um, uh, the chief judge of, uh, of Kanu state. And I believe that uh, I'm not in a position to speak for them. And I believe that the NJC and the judiciary are working towards the event, the ugly event that, um, that unfold as a result of uh, the, the use of the, the mechanical use of the judiciary when it comes to uh, political play and issues. Do you understand? But however, this has actually exposed the the lapses of the judiciary and i believe that events like this we we strengthen how the judiciary work let's give them the benefit of doubt that well you know they are part of the society one thing you need to understand that the judiciary are part of the society but they are blind to the society because it's what you bring to them that is what they act on that is the kind of judicial system we practice in nigeria so let's assume and we'll give them the benefit of that, that the judiciary, the NJC, will look at what really transpired and see the possible way, if there is sanction, if there's anything they need to do to forestall such an ugly event from happening in future. All right, we do also recognize that due to the nationwide strike, a lot of things were sustained or actually were stopped. And now that the strike is over, do you see this going on for long? Because the people of Kano State at this point, uh, seem to be confused. Uh, too many court uh, injunctions, uh, too many uh, interim injunctions here and there, and everyone in Kano is wondering, which one do we follow? You have just said that anyone could be followed in, in, in the layman's, uh, layman's term. But how long will this take? And most importantly, 
what are the risks, the risk factor that this could actually have, especially on the, uh, on the people of Kano State and most importantly, um, on the emership as well? Okay, uh, if we look at it, you, first of all, let me take the first leg of the question that uh, how long will it take? You described that one of the federal high courts granted by my Lord Honorable Justice Lima, uh, the case was adjourned to 4th of uh, June, which as a result of the industrial action, it didn't take place. Issues like this happen in judicial process. And if you also go further, a new date will be issued to parties. A new date will be issued to parties. And as a matter of fact, these are issues of urgency. And looking at the security implication of this issue, I believe that um, the uh, when the, since uh, things have become normal now, because the uh, the strike has been called off, there will be issued parties will be issued the relevant dates to enable them to enable them appear before the court to canvass their arguments. To yeah. canvass their arguments. Well, hold on. You understand? Then two on the uh, on the implication like i told you when the temple of justice become confused anarchy will be let loose i'm not trying to say that the judiciary is confused but like i told you if these two orders or the three orders are to be respected anarchy is will definitely certain but i really commend the wisdom in kano state what uh, people have uh, the the citizen the way they react to the situation and how the law enforcement agencies are acting and even the state government because we need to also commend the state government for the uh, um, the, uh, the the way and manner they are responding to the situation because if they are to respond in other ways or if we look at Nigeria far back in 10 years' time, you would have seen that something would have, something drastic would have happened because there would have been an allegation that, okay, well, somebody somewhere is trying to play this thing. But one thing I want people to understand is that this is not new in Kano states. Yeah. It is not new in Kano uh, states. It has been a reoccurrence of history than the memory lane. Yeah. Political interference in the throne, do you understand? Even as far down to Sir Amadou Bello, do you understand them? Come down to the, the, the immediate past, Ganduji. Do you understand? There have been interference. But Kanu is one of the most prominent traditional stew that we can respect, that, that we can hold on to. If you look at the other, if you look at other clan, you discover that this thing happens on a daily basis. And it cannot be taken away because these are the powers of the state. But it all depends on who is at the helm of affairs of that particular state. I mean, anyway, it's still not just making a lot of sense, you know, because, you know, if, if the state is meant to be the one responsible for traditional matters, you know, then I'm not sure why there's a, you know, federal high court in Abuja that is getting itself involved with state matters. But, you know, we're out of time. We hope that, you know, as things unravel, we'll understand better. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. And we wish you, You're of welcome. course, a brilliant rest of today. Thank you. All right. Still staying in northern Nigeria, moving from Kano now to Kaduna State, the Kaduna State House of Assembly has uh, adopted a report from an ad hoc committee tasked with uh, probing the administration of former Governor Nasser El Rufai. The report submitted by Mr. Zakaria during Wednesday's plenary faulted Mr. El Rufai's administration on the multi billion naira loans it obtained from the state, or for the state, I beg your pardon. The report alleged that the loans were not used for their intended purposes. And in some cases, due process was not followed in securing the loans. Receiving the report, the Speaker of the Kaduna State House of Assembly, Yusuf Liman, said that a total of 423 billion naira was siphoned by the El Rufai's administration while leaving the state with huge liabilities. The committee therefore recommended the investigation and prosecution of El Rufai. Uh, some other indicted members of his cabinet, of course, you know, by security and anti-corruption agencies for abuse of office through the award of contracts without due process, diversion of public funds and money laundering, as well as plaguing uh, Kaduna State into heavy debt. Well, do recall that in a statement issued through his uh, media advisor, uh, Muiwa Adikaye El Rufai has criticized the probe, calling it a politically motivated hatchet job, denying the allegations. El Rufai served as governor for two terms between 2015 and 2023. Also recall that on March 30, Uba Sani, governor of Kaduna, said his administration inherited a debt of $587 million, 85 billion naira, and 115 contractual liabilities from El Rufai's administration. Well, joining us now is National Coordinator 
coalition of northern groups. We do have with us uh, comrade uh, Jamilu Aliyu Charanchi. Thank you so much and um, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you doing? We're doing great. We're doing fine. Uh, just that uh, this story is one that could, um, you know, make you catch cold. Uh, so uh, <laughs> let's delve into it very quickly. Now, a number of Nigerians, most importantly, uh, got to see this story yesterday. And some have quickly uh, resorted to saying that it is politically motivated, even from the respondent, uh, from um, the camp of the former governor, El Rafai. Uh, first off, what's your thought on this? And um, do you think that this is truly politically motivated? Well, you see, good morning, Nigerians. Well, you see, it is understandable for the the, the, the government uh, of uh, distinguished Senator Obasani to investigate the former happenings of the Kaduna State government. It is understandable. But for Obasani to come out to tell us that Nasuri El Rufai has acquired the loan uh, uh, in, in, in another way around, he didn't acquire the loan properly, he indebted Kaduna State. That will be ridiculous, and uh, I think it is an abuse to the sensitivity of Nigerians. Because we can easily recall, history will not forget anything. We can easily recall when people like Sheikh Hussani, who was representing Kaduna now as, as, as of then at the Senate, they were saying that they could not allow Europa to incur such amount of loan because they believe that Kaduna state will be indebted, and there must be a repercussion or consequences for that being indebtedness to that state. And uh, that what actually brings Obasani as a senator of Kaduna knows, Kaduna knows as of then at the National Assembly. They do, they facilitate the loan, they do whatever they can do possibly happens to ensure that Europa is secured that loan. And Europa is secured the loan. And now Obasani is complaining. What, what, what is he telling all Nigeria? What is he telling the indigenous of Kaduna state? Is he trying to tell us that he just played with our intelligence? Is he trying to tell us that that game was played just for his own political interest? Is he trying to tell us that he has no people in, in, his, uh, in his mind? Is he trying to tell us that he didn't calculate it very well, that there must be a repercussion or consequences of that law to Kaduna State government? Or is he trying to tell us that he never knew that he would be the governor of Kaduna State? That's why he allowed Nasur Europa to do whatever he did, because that will not affect him directly. And now he has become the governor of Kaduna State, and he began to shout and make mouths. He began to complain that the loan was Nasur students even supposed to secure that law who facilitated the loan. So even if Europa, he, at least he betrayed the people of Kaduna State, I believe that people like Obasani must have a large share of that betrayal to the good people of Kaduna State. Yeah, and he but, is telling us that... Yeah, just to you know, chip in, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much, you know, almost the same thing we, that we saw in River State, where the River State governor, Simfubara, you know, who was part of Yesom Wike's governor, um, government rather, you know, is now calling for a probe of uh, the yes or wicked government because of, you know, misappropriation of funds, you know, and people mentioned that he was a part of that government. So, I mean, that's pretty much the same thing you're saying now about Ubasani and uh, Nasser or Rufai. But it doesn't, regardless of whether he benefited or he was part of the, you know, the loan um, uh, requesting uh, uh, phase of the um, uh, Kaduna State government back then, doesn't stop the need for a probe. I, I'm, I'm not sure if you see, think otherwise. The, the fact that he what, may have what? been part of that government doesn't mean that questions should not be asked as to how the state, you know, seems to, you know, not be able to account for 430-something billion naira. We're talking, you know, about hundreds of millions of dollars here. You see, we are talking about two things here. One is securing the loan. He said that the loan even secured it, it indebted the government. Then secondly, we are talking about the proof of national enterprise administration. I have no any issue with the proof of National Europe's administration, as I have no any issues with the proof of Wukia's administration. Because being you part and parcel of that administration, in as much as you are not the head of that administration, there are things that are beyond your control. And there are things that you may like and you may not like, but you are both your CNC may decide to do it. Now, but if you become the CNC, you may decide to investigate the previous administration, even if it happens that you are part and parcel of the people who have looted that state. I have no problem with that. But the issue is that, for you to facilitate me to secure a loan, and you come back and tell the whole world that I have indebted my state, that is ridiculous. You would have told me that you shouldn't secure that loan, especially when some people have even raised an alarm that that loan will not be healthier to our state. And that that loan, if we, if we secure the loan, there must be a consequences and detrimental consequences to the state. But you ignore the call, you ignore the hearing, 
you ignore all the calls, all the shouting people that have been made. In part, some people have to pay the supreme price of that loan by sacrificing their seats. And that's what even makes Obasani to be the senator of Kaduna. That's what I'm saying. I have no problem with him to prove whether Europe, whether Europe's administration has integrity or not. I have no. But one thing I am very much sure of is that Europe has done something to that state. And if you go to Kaduna State today, you will realize that there are a lot of developmental projects that Europe has put to that state. I pray that by the end of the Obasani tenure, he may be able to do such kind of project in Kaduna State. Well. At least posterity will even remember him, even if. There are loans out there are loans allegations of corruption you? against against him. In as much as he can do that, I definitely know that the good people of Kaduna State and Northern Nigeria in general will appreciate how he handled the issue. Would there you, are some states would you that recommend even seen anything. regardless of you know how much you know infrastructural development um RFI brought into Kaduna State, would you also recommend a probe into the finances of you know Kaduna State in the time that he was governor? Why else now? It has to be proved because uh, national Republic is not above anybody. If there are any allegations against him that he mismanaged the content, he has, he has to be investigated. And if he is found guilty, he has to be dealt with so that at least to serve as a detriment to other people. The difference here is that why would Obasani persuade Nasuri Erofa to secure that loan? And why would he be complaining about the loan? Yeah. He shouldn't have talked about I, that I, loan. When you he say he persuaded him, only. when you say he persuaded him, are you saying that Nasser Arafai wouldn't have taken those loans if not for, you know, the convincing words of Obasani? Whether convincing or other convincing actions. When, when Sheikh Hussani and Co. were the senators in Kaduna Central at the National Assembly, he was unable to secure the loan. They protected it. They do all things possible to ensure that he didn't get that loan. And we never knew that that would be a blessing to Kaduna State until when now Obasani is telling us that what, what Sheikh Hussaini did is a blessing to Kaduna State and the good people of Kaduna State. Then if you know that it will be a blessing, why will you allow him to do that? Why will you even facilitate it? You, you should have done the same thing what Sheikh Hussaini has done when he was, the mem uh, when he was representing Kaduna North at the, National, at the National Assembly. So it will be a ridiculous and abuse to the sensitivity of people of Kaduna State for now, for Obasani to be telling them that that loan, he shouldn't have secured that loan. Now Kaduna State is indebted. Now this thing and this thing and this thing. He would have gone straight to the point that we will prove the previous administration to see whether they are right or not. Where they have looted the treasury, they should bring it back and there must be a detrimental consequences for looting the treasury. That would have been fair to him and fair to Kaduna State people and fair to the people of Northern Nigeria. All right, Mr. Mr. Charanji, um, one thing that continues to baffle a lot of uh, persons, especially from the north and the entirety of uh, the country, Nigeria, is the fact that um, a lot of politicians seem to have their names um, being, you know, called out after office or during their time in office for embezzlement of funds. Uh, we did see the recent one of um, uh, the former governor, Belo Matawali, um, who's also having his own case um, coming forth. Um, now we've seen uh, former governor, El Rufai. Uh, we've also seen the current uh, chair of the APC, uh, who's also been called out, especially for funds and so on. You know, so many, so many instances. And we can continue to mention names uh, upon names upon names. Um, before this one, we also saw White Lion as well, um, whom the EFCC have not been able to find up until now as we speak. Do you think this case that has to do with uh, the former governor, El Rufai, holds water. Do you think it would, it would lead to anything at all? Because Nigerians have seen these things happen, but at the end of the day, nothing happens. You see, our problem is that we don't have, we don't have leaders in the news, particularly the political leaders, I mean. We don't have leaders. We only have politicians. And the politician always cares on how to secure the next election, while a leader always cares how to secure the next generation. In a situation whereby you have a leader who doesn't have people at his heart, who doesn't have passion for the people, and he doesn't have the passion for the progress or development of his people, that means that leader can do anything for him to ensure that he retain his seat or he can secure next election. And our major issue challenges in the, in, in the country in general is that the politics has already been monetized. You cannot go to politics without money. So these people are looking all desperately, all means that they can amaze wells. So that at least whenever they are looking for any possible uh, seat appointment, whatever it is, at least they can find their way in through uh, through their means or through their wells. That's the issue.
That's why you have been seeing all these corruption allegations from different places. In fact, the corruption allegations that even you cannot even think of, you cannot even quantify, you cannot even think of somebody who has sense, somebody who has passion for his people, somebody who even believed in the hereafter and took that amount of money and go and kept it somewhere else that he cannot even use it. Where we have deliberated bros, where we have collapsed schools, where we have collapsed education sector, where we have insecurity everywhere, where we have health issues everywhere, but you can still amaze amount such kind of huge amount of money and go and stash them somewhere else, you that you cannot benefit with it, you cannot use them, you cannot do anything with. We have even seen a situation where some people are even driving PJ 406 out of the government house. Yeah, comrade. How ridiculous these people are. It is very mm -hmm. unfortunate. Comrade Kar uh, Charanchi, thank you very much. Um, we, of course, are out of time for this conversation. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, we'll see how the case in Kaduna State develops. I also saw a response from uh, Senator Shehu Sani, you know, that we probably will talk about next time you, you stop by. Thanks for your time and see you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Mm. All right. Anyway, let's move on now to our very next story very uh, quickly. Let's tell you that the House of Representatives has indeed chastised organized labor, which includes the Nigeria Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress, uh, for indeed brandishing uh, false um, salaries and the likes. So we'll have that discussion right after this break. Do well to stay with us. It's still Breakfast Central. And thanks for staying here with us. The House of Representatives has uh, chastised organized labor, which includes the Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, and Trade Union Congress, TUC, for misleading the public about fake earnings by members. It said that the, uh, they actually endeavor uh, to actually uh, incite public animosity towards members and, of course, weaken the legislature's uh, credibility. It uh, cautioned that such acts could incite public resentment of lawmakers and weaken the uh, legislature's uh, reputation. It also demanded that those damaging the nation's economy be held accountable. In a related update, the House of Representatives has urged the federal government to consider a living wage instead of a minimum wage for Nigerian workers. The House urged the government to redirect the focus of the ongoing negotiations from fixing a new minimum wage to fixing a realistic living wage for Nigerians. Uh, to discuss this, we're joined by Vice Chairman, NLC Lagos State Council, Olabisi Adebayo uh, Ido. Good morning and thanks for joining us, sir. Uh, Good morning for having me this morning. All right. The, of course, you know, um, the House of Reps, uh, you, know, you know, doesn't seem very happy with the NLC or organized labor generally for the speculations about their um, wages and about their salaries. Let's we can get your take on that first. Um, is labor certain on what figures it is quoting as to what the uh, members of the National Assembly earn as, you know, reasons for their demand for, you know, an incremental minimum wage? Well, uh, good morning, Nigerians. In actual sense, if they are trying to be fidgety as regards information going around, uh, they will have come on board to place it on Nigeria to see, actually, the amount of money they are collecting as their salary monthly. If you don't see them talk just like that, in other words, maybe to gain a cheap popularity, they should come out and defend it by themselves, not by staying somewhere saying that we are trying to blackmail them. All right. Uh, well, if you say um, they should come out and defend it themselves, we do recall that um, the members of the Assembly have gone on to say that uh, their salaries are, are, are not what, uh, let's just make it clear, it's hardly seen by the public. We do recall years ago, we used to see uh, salaries put on the front pages of the newspaper, just as we've seen that of the Chief Justice of Nigeria also being shared on newspapers that is going to be earning 65 million naira annually. Um, if we may ask, where did the organized labor get these figures from that is being shared? Let me say this emphatically with all authority. There's no smoke in any given society without fire. And whenever you believe you are smart, you have some people that are smarter than you. They are looking at it as an allegation. But we are saying they should come on board to prove a point to Nigeria that what we are saying, we are not right. They should come on board. It's in actual sense, in terms of comparison analysis, in the whole world today, the NAS, the National Assembly of Nigerians, receive the highest pay. They receive the highest pay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. That's right. what we are saying. This, what we are talking, discussing this time around, if what we are saying, they should come. Even though they can, they can, they can remove their names or whatsoever from the paper. And let us see. So, they, yes, they receive it now. They, they, they have it. But, but I think the money, the money passed through certain place before they get to them. Just like what the, the Senate president said the other time, maybe uh, when they are going for a, a festival, and they said our prayer, go, go and check your box. Yeah. After that, we got the amount of the money that they turned to be a prayer. Yeah, but I mean, what, what would your response be to people who say that, you know, regardless of what they earn, you know, that is a totally different argument. The labor can demand for a better minimum wage from the federal government without interfering with what the members of the National Assembly earn. They are mouth speaker of the populace, and they are there looking at the federal government trying to toy the life of the workers in Nigeria, the people that lay the golden egg, and they cannot say anything until they wait to the die minute. And I look at them as a gesture of the year. They fail from their own responsibility. And based on that, we go on our way to make sure we dig out everything. It's simply because they are comfortable in their, in their house, in their domain. That's why they look at it. What we are doing is they are less concerned. You, you think that they have failed? Definitely, woefully. They have failed woefully. Because if you fail to, to act at a given time, at the right time, no, there, no, nobody will recognize you. Yeah, do you, do you, you know, see, the, do you say the same thing about every National Assembly, you know, even in the past? I mean, the previous National Assembly, the one before it, the yeah. one currently, you know, being um, headed by uh, the uh, Senate President, uh, Gosfula Pabio. Uh, uh, in terms of comparison analysis, uh, uh, if you want to talk about uh, the, the House, I think we go back to 1979, when those people who have the heart of Nigeria at heart. They have the heart of Nigeria at heart. But this time around, the idea for jamborees. That, I mean, you've talked about the idea for jamborees, but let's also look at the demands. You said suspension. You're suspending the strike for five days. Today is day two. Yeah. So that means three more days. Yes. First of all, let me ask quickly. The weekend, is it added to the weekend? Is weekend added to the days or just working weekdays? Working week, okay, weekdays. Okay, working weekdays. So good, good. Uh, it, would, it would elapse on Wednesday next week. That's fine. That falls on June 12th, if I'm right, if I look at my, I mean, my timetable. Anyway, aside from that, the Senate itself, um, we do here, are saying that picketing is fine. But taking it as far as going to the national grid and then the airport was a step too far to have been taken by uh, the organized union. What's your take on that? Well, uh, you know, we call ourselves organized labor. We respect the lot of the land. And it is based on that, we give them a wide open window, 31 ultimatum day. And they could not do anything. And if the House of Assembly is ranting around, you no, know, we, we don't look at their side. And that one, it's not that. Maybe we did something funny. We will draw our services. And you know, if there's nobody to control this, uh, your gadget now, it will come down by itself. And that won't happen. Nobody to direct, nobody to control. Everybody, we will draw our services. And then we are not waiting. And it is so is that truly we are very, very important. Yeah. We made the word of the country. And that won't happen. And legally, we have the right to go on picketing or to go on strike, covered by the Lord of the land. And that won't happen. We do not do anything funny. We withdraw our services. Yeah. And that won't happen. All right, quickly, just to add to that, because we need to talk about, you know, the um, um, five days also. You know, there's, a, you know, discussions about criminalizing uh, picketing the airport and the national grid. You know, what... How would Labour's response be to that? Uh, well, uh, I can say that uh, that language is fallacy. Yes, I can say with yeah. authority. If you listen to me now, I said it just now. Mm. We are covered under the law. We yeah. are organized Labour. We respect the law of the land at any given but time. But they want to remove that aspect from the law. Yeah. Which one? Which one do you All right. Remember? So there are rumors, uh, just as a side, there are rumors that the, the Senate is planning to remove from the law to expunge that aspect that you don't have rights to pick it at it's not possible. the national green Under the ILO, they can't do that. Nigeria is not different from other countries. If they do the right, you can see what we are saying. If truly the Senate and that's of reps, uh, reps have the, the heart 
of Nigeria, they all heart at every given time, they will not be talking of that. You can see how that happened. You see, honestly, they've turned our country to another thing entirely. You know, that's why when you are trying to ask me, you know, I took it back to the time memorial, 1979, when we have our father that have the heart of Nigeria at their heart. Yeah. And they, what they are trying to do now, are they trying to turn everything into... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what us that we don't have the freedom yeah. again. Yeah, because of time. Um, five days is what you've given the government. Yeah. There's meant to be daily meetings with the federal government. You know, can you share with us how those meetings have gone so far? Is there any um, agreements that we are likely going to reach? Maybe, you know, with figures in mind also? You see, uh, for now, you can't pre uh, preempt anybody. They are still discussing. But we are waiting for our leaders are there. If they, they change. Because actually, in any given society, that's the only thing that is constant, and that has changed. We are waiting for them. Yeah. We are waiting for them. But we believe they will not mess up with us again. You see, all those things, is we look, I look at that statement or that act from the heart of Senate and Rep. That's a threatening. And that one cannot help Nigeria to move forward. When you are there to protect our own interests, you are not threatening us that you want to reform this. Is that the next thing to be done now? Go and check other countries in Africa. Understand? Go and check their salaries. In times, maybe if you want to look at it in dollar rate. Yeah. Go and check it. You will see that if we are nowhere to be found and we call ourselves a giant of Africa. Especially when we're all producing nation, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, 100,000 naira is what we hear that, um, the, <laughs> that you're about to settle for, you know? The NLC and the TUC are about to settle for 100,000 naira. So it's gone from 475. You know, you started from you started initially from your one, you know, million. Break it down. Negotiations. Break, sitting at the table. And now 100,000 naira. Is this feasible? Well, well what are you trying to tell me now? I can look at it as a rumor. But what we are saying, we are not going to take anything less than three digits number. So one zero zero is three digits. Number. Don't worry. Until we get there, we are waiting for them. You know, you know, people started crucifying us when we come on board with one million naira. When you are going to negotiate on the table, you start from somewhere. Mm. And we are being realistic enough. If you look at the parameter, when we project one million, federal government came on board with the other 40 or 48 something. Thereafter, the, yeah. the, the added 3,000 naira. It's an insult. Then we move from one million to 615. Look at that gap. You understand? They will move again from 615 to 400 and something. See, you, you have to start from somewhere. So that if yeah. everybody, if Nigerians look at church very well, they will look at it that we are passionate about our country. Does, final question. Does every member of uh, the organized labor um, trust your leadership, Joe Ajero and Felix Osifo? Yeah. Do, you, do you trust that they will not you know, succumb to pressure or anything you know, during those uh, negotiations? No, never. We trust them more than other things. You see... You didn't defend him when he was beaten up, in a way. You see, let me tell you something. That one, you know, uh, let's leave that one. Maybe if you can call on us to discuss that one in an elaborate way, it would be fine. But let me tell you, there are leaders and there are leaders. Comrade Joe Ajero is the kind of person that can use my last blood in my friend to protect because mm. of integrity. If you want to know much about Joe Ajero, you can try and call uh, or do a find this towards what happened during the time when the federal government of this nation decided to sell out Nepal. He was invited to be brought up, but he revealed he did not. He said something that day that I prefer and I would love if my people, even just a day to be called a millionaire, that money, I don't need it, and it's a huge amount of money. I've never seen an Igbo man like him. It's a man of integrity. Mm. Okay, all right. Very interesting. Anyway, um, we look forward to um, have you again, hopefully next week when the five days have elapsed. Let's see if you're going to go back on strike, or hopefully before then, the federal government and the organized labor would have reached an agreement and Nigerians can continue to... Uh, to live their lives. Thank you so much for being here. We truly appreciate you. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Labisi Adebayo Ido, who happens to be the uh, Vice Chairman, NLC Lagos State Council.
Welcome. Uh, now let's get you through the newspapers this morning and share with you the major stories making headlines across Nigeria. Joining us to review these papers is Razak Olokobai, who's a, a public affairs analyst. Good morning. Thanks Thank for you. joining morning. us morning. as usual. Good morning, viewers, too. Um, I'm guessing, you know, the papers are going to be covering from the Kaduna State's, uh, you know, uh, issues with Nasai Arufai, amongst other things. But let's see um, what's on our first paper this morning. Um, I guess it's going to be the punch, or the vanguard, yes. It says, federal government's failure to make fresh offers stalls wage talks. Also, government plans 6.6 .6 trillion naira supplementary budget uh, to fast-track economic growth. Uh, still some controversy with regards to... Uh, um, the subsidy payment or not. I remember that's one of the things that came up yesterday. Also, U.S. lawmakers petitioned Biden, say um, Binan's executive wrongfully detained in Nigeria. Top of the vanguard, Kaduna Assembly, Erufai, Tango over alleged diversion of 423 billion naira. And also, uh, Edo Gubernatorial, why are some politicians are angry with Obaseki, says Martins. Those are the lead stories this morning on the Vanguard, of course, you can see there, Nigeria witness positive change after sacrifice, <laughs> says uh, Shatima. One would think it's uh, Kanayo Kanayo who said that, but it's apparently it's a vice president. All right, those are the stories on the Vanguard this morning. Let's move on to the second paper this morning. Uh, the second paper we're looking at uh, before we bring uh, on our guest uh, to look at these stories. Uh, at the top there of the punch, it says, Tidibu may suspend import duties on food and drugs. Did I hear somebody just say since or it's about time? Anyway, Senate OK 60 million Naira salary for CJN as Supreme Court justices. Uh, also on Heritage Bank, the, the, the crisis rocking Heritage Bank. NDIC goes after 700 billion Naira loan defaulters, list 2.3 million depositors. Mm. The big one at the front there, Finance Minister submits template to Tunibu today. Don't forget, he was given 48 hours to come up with, with um, a living wage. Tripartite Committee awaits template to resume negotiations 2 p.m. on Thursday. Customs intercept 3.9 billion naira uh, pangolin skills in Kerbi, uh, in Kerbi State. We saw that. 25 suspected killers of Oyo Vasti student arraigned. A sad story there. Um, I think that's, that's all we can take on the front page. And of course, the big one, 4, 2, 3, Billion Naira. That's 423 billion Naira theft. Erufai kicks as Kaduna Assembly orders probe. Yeah. Um, these are what we're taking on. Uh, these are the stories are taken on the front page of a uh, punch. All right. Um, I think we can rush through one next paper and then we um, bring in um, our guest this morning uh, to have his thoughts. You know, of course, what's going on with the um, Kaduna State and uh, um, minimum wage. Pro panel accuses Euro 5 of diverting 423 billion naira. Ex governor says he served with integrity, of course. Uh, PDP counters Atiku OB alliance discussions, denies major talks with any political party. Bloomberg, Nigeria may suspend import levies on food to ease inflation. And also, federal government insists Binance executive uh, complicit as 16 US lawmakers accuse Nigeria of taking him off stage. Um, it, because of time, let's bring, quickly bring you in. Uh, quickly on the uh, minimum wage discussions, five days suspension of the um, of the um, um, strike, um, but of course you know it's likely that they would come to a conclusion before the, between the next five days. But what are your thoughts on how it has been handled so far? And of course the template that Mr. President has asked Wale Adun to bring for you know forward. Well, well, there are three angles to it. The issue itself, the day after increase and the nature of the strike, the increase itself is a, a, a demand that is legitimate. Um, nobody will disagree with the need to increase salary of workers, particularly uh, government workers. So I am in total support of it. Then, uh, the day after the salary increase, it allows me my concern the way labor has been handling the day after salary increase. It's been the same pattern. Once salary is increased, statistics shows that uh, it's there. Federal Bureau of Statistics that 76% of Nigerians see for unconventional means to support their salary every month. It ranges. Some people seek for 30% to add to their salary through borrowing, through begging. Expert opinion says that uh, the trend that is going to follow after the salary increase will be worse than before. That many of the salaries increase, price of commodity will go up. And Nigerians who will be seeking for unconventional means will be very difficult to determine because 
that are 60 to 35 percent unconventional means to survive adding to your salary and that is the angle nigerians are not looking at that's the angle the government is not looking at and that's the angle and Nigerians, are, the anger has prevented us from looking at it, and it's important. And that is why, in their discussion too, I saw the DD of a man, Man Fasala Association of Nigeria. I saw it in the discussion. And that's a good one, and that is why it must go simultaneously. You can't increase salary and start talking about how to moderate prices. It must go together. So whatever labor is doing, is going to be a disservice to 1.2 million workers. And the one that is not funny that we need a bracket if you don't do something about it. So we have to drag government and labor to look at that. That you can't put us in this mess. For instance, you are in, in the private in the private sector. The danger is that the uh, uh, private sectors are beginning to weigh the option of what do we, what are we going to do about it if this thing becomes a reality. Labor unions will start following telecoms organization. Oil, oil and gas, uh, oil energy industry, that's the airline, to talk about <laughs> wage increase. So it's either they remain where they are and continue to earn what they are, or they will increase salary and lay off. To prevent that, to prevent that, is the reason why it is important not to make the demand that looks outrageous, so that the, 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 the economy will be able to accommodate it. Private sector government will be able to accommodate it. But if it's too outrageous, there's no how there's not going to be a fallout. Mm -hmm. So if I lay it from the, the in the usual way the civil society will condemn labor, people will understand that's why we have to break it down. That the point we are making is this. That's number one. Then the nature of the strike, we have talked about the demand. It's legitimate. We have talked about the day after the demand, if it is realized. Then the nature of the strike, the nature of the strike is also another concern to many Nigerians, including me. There's a limit to an anger. It's only in Nigeria that uh, you will be staging a protest and you say there should be no limits. And that was where we tried to caution when instance was coming on board that no, there are people who want to go about their business. They agree with you, but you can't shut down everything. So the nature of the strike, there's a, there's a standard now all over the world that you must not sabotage your country mm. in the name of protest. Putting off, the national, what, what putting off the national grid right. is a sabotage. Oh, hold on, what? hold on. Um, mm. Elder David, good morning. You don't have to do that. Okay, I think we'll, we'll get back that call. But just to remind our viewers that you can call and chip in. Um, if you don't agree with Mr. Lo Mr. Lokobad this morning, please um, feel free to join us and mm. share why you don't agree with him. Mm. Um, down the national mm. grid. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, we, we just had, you know, you know mem uh, the vice president of NLC Lagos, you know, mm -hmm. join us, you know, and his argument is that they didn't shut it down. They really just withdrew their services, you know, from those places. And, and there's nobody really to operate it, it so and it it's shuts not, down. It's not because they intentionally went to shut down the national grid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what do you call a limit to protesting? You know, because uh, when, when you are protests are not necessarily meant to... No, no when, you are, when you are protesting, there's a limit to it, just that there's, there's a limit to if my you're rights. not destroying my government right, infrastructure... My right, my right should not impede on your right. People who have no business with your protest should not be hampered yeah. from going out by their services. Now, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a protest person. I'm a labor person. I've been consultant to government on labor issues. Yeah. And I'm, an, I'm a labor union person. There are people who are assigned to enforce strikes. This, these, are, these are strategies that, can, that should only work during the military. During the military, you have a universal demand. All of us want the military to go. So anything you can do to make the military go is acceptable that time when Kokori said that uh, NNPC, uh, Pengasan, all of them should go on. It's acceptable. But today, it's no longer acceptable when you shut down the entire nation. Yeah, but again, fact, it's not shut from what he's saying. I, I'm coming there. I'm coming yeah. there. The, nobody should tell us that. We monitor the strike. And we see people going to shut generators or banks down. If a bank union, a bank branch, did right. not shut down himself. All, right. all you need to call is to call the, uh, the, 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 on, the, the, the union yeah. all right. in the banking on, sector that on. you are not complying. All right, let's speak with someone from Biosa. Good morning, Olay. Good morning. Morning, welcome. Yeah. Go ahead. Mm. I want to shift in based on what uh, the speaker is saying on your TV. Yeah. That uh, we should look the high price of the team. In Nigeria, as we, as we are, 
the commodity of steel. I remember back then we were buying a basket of a carry about uh, 250 naira. It gets to 500, from 500 to 700, from 700 to 1,200. Any commodity that has got high in Nigeria never comes down. So let's forget about that. Just fit the increment of salary towards the workers in Nigeria. Thank you. All right. I know what is opposed to salary increase, but there are certain demand that is certain money you demand for me, and I'll tell yeah, you, you, it's not payable and it's also uncollectible. Mr. Lokuba, but mm. do, do you see? Because you know, the argument will also be that you need so to make free things. fall, free fall of prices. That's what we should do. No, 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 no. Well, no salary because, increase, because we, we should not. We need to bother about free fall. But can I also Hold share on. with you uh, that we already have free fall of prices? Uh, that's what I'm saying. That's uh, already. There's a solution to it. And what's the solution? And one of the solution is what the labor is running away from. We have engaged labor. I've been on, we have been on here today, right on the days of Osho Omale. Osho Omale, come. You can't be asking for salary increase all the time. Why do price of food keep increasing? It's because farmers don't have access to their farm. And the reason why farmers don't have access is because it's because they are not enough. We have less than half a million police in Nigeria. Mm. They can't secure 250 million Nigerians. Join us in the call for a new layer. If you like, don't call join, it the police. Join who? Join the civil society in the call. Yeah, but, for, so, but, but, but in the call, let me make this point yeah. so that you understand. In the call for a numerous layer of security, one institution cannot secure Nigeria. They say, no, we can't call for state police, so it's not our business. No, but, as, as, also, so how do you secure what I'm the farm? That's number one. Number two is that the, the power sector. They said they want the, they, they want the, there should be a light. I said, okay, what's the yeah, solution to light? The prop, the prop, see, you can. Discuss power, you can yeah. discuss security, you can yeah. discuss, uh, you know, refineries, yeah. all these details. Mm. But it's not like we have a vibrant civil society that we're speaking about here. How, how, how will we be vibrant? You want me to go to jail for Nigeria again? Uh, so exactly. To, so, I mean, to, 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 but why are you talking about it's what Labour is doing? It's hold complimentary. On, hold on. Labour should complement all the things. And Nigeria should also complement. We have right, a call. Hold There's on. There's no civil society. We have a call from Abuja. Good morning. Please turn down the, your TV volume or turn it off. Good morning. Thank you very much. I, uh, I, good morning for having me this morning. Go ahead. I think uh, what, what I've seen is that uh, your guest is not speaking mind of Nigeria. It's okay. a situation where we are buying a bank of Jericho 80,000. We are buying 80,000. Here in Abuja, and your guest is telling us this is what you support to do. I think the right thing, that is the right thing level do, and they should go down the negotiation. The lowest thing should be no less than 200. What are we talking about? Somebody, let's say, is what is saying, Masaka is working in federal secretariat. Transport is 1,000 from Masaka to, to, the, to the federal secretariat. Formula is 200. Now, how do we survive? I think your guest is not telling us the truth, Philip. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. Right. Oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not speaking the matter of Nigeria. Yeah, so he's, he's, he... I'm speaking what is the standard that when salaries are increased, you also control price. Absolutely. That's the standard. That's so the standard, which, which, yes. which, which, yeah. so which mind is he talking about? Mr. Talk about to say that uh, speak about the keep civil increasing society. salary. The civil society yeah. is not a career thing. We put our life on the line for Nigerians. But there should be a complementary role from the people. The people are not ready to join whatever we are calling for. If you stay the protest now. Yeah, we are always in 10th, in 20th, in 15th. I, I led the protest for six weeks ago to pass power holdings here, here in Lagos. You are less than 30. The community who will stay the protest Why on their behalf. Is? The community will stay the protest for, came with a coaster, 11 people inside. <laughs> I brought 20 people. <laughs> for, and the latter has been restored, though. So, 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 where a landlord should collect one million naira for three bedroom flat is unjustified, and you are saying it's not mind of Nigerians. So the, the mind of Nigerians is that once you increase salary to four hundred thousand naira now, right. bedroom flat that goes for one million should go to ten million naira. All right. So we should. That, that's uh, Nigerians' anger. We have to learn how to control yeah. it so that. But our point will be made. But you the point I'm making is that uh, but salary increase is important. 
Okay. And it has come but, to, but it was come think, to stay. But do you think that one of the best ways to have uh, you know, stopped this back and forth mm. would have also been if the federal government put up a, a press release or addressed Nigerians and said, we've seen the hardship, therefore we are cutting down on our cost as well. So that whatever we cut down from our cost, we would channel it into the, uh, yeah, I mean, the system because none of to your ensure that we have. can help is this institutions. So, institution, wait. Please hold on, please. We, uh, we institution, have a call. okay. Uh, uh, good morning, Elder David. Good morning, Elder David. Thank you very much, sir. Quickly, Go please. Ahead. The, what the what the man what the man there is saying is not is, is not wrong. What he's saying is that what the union is demanding is outrageous. It will further escalate our problem. The union should know that whatever they are demanding today, when they are demanding for is it possible to pay such money? It's a question we are asking. And let me tell you too, they are bringing politics into this issue, which is very bad. And not those who are just talking. The government is trying to make sure that there's food. We are suffering. We know what is what is costing now. Then if we are going to pay that amount, then if you are now telling me that a bag of fire will be sold for almost about five hundred thousand. That's what the man is trying to explain. Not those who are criticizing him. Those who are criticizing right. are just trying to play policy with Adero. Adero man is a member of Labour. And it should not be playing politics with Nigerians there. Yeah. But, but Mr. Right. Mr. Elder David. Elder David. Simple. Uh, David, thanks for calling. But do you agree? Do you, do you submit that um, uh, the money should be reviewed? Of course. The jobless suit are there and everybody is there. What you might say is correct. All right. Thank you so much. All right, for thanks a lot. Thanks. You know, I, because you know, none of the conversations we've had this morning have spoken about what government itself is failing to do and has failed to do for decades. Maybe even It will not be different. Yes. That's going to be the attitude of the government. Except you strengthen your institution. Since 1990, it has not changed. And since 1990, it did. Tell me, I ask you that day, that which government that has come, unlike Lagos, yeah. the current governor is doing better than the present governor, uh, the former governor. The former governor is going to the previous governor. That's not the case with Nigeria. Nigerian case is that, is that the past administration has also better than the present one. Why? Because you have a weak institution. And that's what I'm saying, labor should come together. Let's just address it. it, it when, when you reverse the trend today, governors will lay their priorities right. Governors right. don't pay attention to security. They are not ready to farm. They are not ready to, to invest the money they are collecting. Just do bogus uh, 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 projects. But if, if you reverse the trend, where they will generate their own money? You will ask your governor where you are paying your tax. Where is your money going? Right. Just like we are asking governor of Lagos now because we are paying tax in Lagos. And that's why the governor is, is always explaining to you, let's say I'm spending your money. Let other states to pick up All right, that. Quick, quickly. And to do in that. In the interest of time, uh, is, Mr. Lokoba. Okay. Yeah, because we, we need to take maybe two other stories before we wrap up. Um, quickly, just quickly jump to the the plan to suspend import duties on food and drugs, and then also the uh, 423 billion naira uh, allegations against former Governor Nasser Arufai. The Kaduna owns, so I'll come back to the drug yeah. issue. The Kaduna own is becoming a, a decimal. <laughs> <laughs> One governor will go, he will say, say, call the past governor a thief. Then another governor will, call, will also call him a chief again. See, political class, is his, this is politics. Otherwise, let him take him to court. No, don't waste our time. Just take him to court. Bring evidence that this man has done what you have accused him for. So, to me, I'm not taking them serious again. Yeah. In UK, in the rivers, UK is now a chief again. Because he has a challenge with Tubara. Any day another governor is fighting another governor again. See, for once, I'm not from Lagos. My own corner, I have a challenge with my governor there. But look at the model in Lagos. The model in Lagos is that uh, it's continuum. It's continuum. Where you work, so it's continuum. And we have 25 million already living in Lagos. More of you want to join us. Yeah. Why? Because it's our work. Then on the import yeah. issues. Um, Adewe, good morning. Hello, good morning. Morning, uh, quickly, go ahead. The and government saying the best that can happen now, because they want to put everybody in trouble. The best is that can happen now is the political office holders to reduce their salary. When they know that, and, and, and I will see, the labor will know that, yes, they're talking seriously. The thing you displayed on your screen today is a, is a big challenge to us. That money is too much. The want they are taking. Please, if they reduce their salary by 50% and their allowances by 
the labor will not be kind of education for something. What is going to happen to run in the village? What is going to happen to us? Or the ordinary people? How can? Because they say for how many days in the week, or how many days in the month, or how many days in the year, making laws ordinarily. It is not anything technical. All right. They, they should reduce their salary by 50%. The labor will not bother anybody about it again. That is the thing. All right, all right. Thanks. Thank, thank you for calling. Thank you for calling. Um, we do have our guest here as well. Um, it's obvious. It's one of the things that we've mentioned here, and we do have we've had correct, some guests coming. It's, of course, it's, the correct it's, 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 the it's no brainer. Particularly the parliament. The parliament salary. You know, your senator is in time. I worked in the parliament before for two years, moved to another sectors of life. And the things they take are salary at times. I wonder what they do other than talking in the parliament for three days. They say they fall into committee. I don't see justification for what they are having. Each senator, I think maybe it has changed now. But I don't think salary, having those staff has changed. Maybe the number has reduced. But before, the senators are is entitled to nine, nine staffs. Yeah. House of, of Assembly, House of Rep, seven. Assembly is six. For God's sake, <laughs> what are you doing with all those staffs? So to me, it's just a Five to waste Nigeria money. Yeah, and you, you, you can see that the job. So, National Assembly budget keeps increasing every year. Every year. So, it, 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 and it, that is why Nigerians find it very difficult not to support whatever the boys do, even sabotaging the country. They say, yes, they are right. This is what promotes the hunger. So, it is time for the parliament to also realize that they are part of the reason why Labour is asking for a trade just fee. So, so I, they need to bring it down. So I, I, I like your stance mm. now in all that we've said from the beginning of the front pages. I think we've, we've pointed a solution here, even with some of our callers who have called, aside from those who, are, who, who do not believe in that, that don't you think it's high time when they sit down with the tripartite uh, arrangement that the owners should be on the federal government that, listen, okay, we need to really cut down. And are cutting down the exigencies, we should be able to push it into the system and see how we can help. Because the truth is, uh, what we are seeing here, we just had a rep from the Labour Party speak that it's going to be three figures or nothing less. Yes, in the middle, that's the solution. But in the final analysis, that's not the solution. Because federal government have unlimited access to Nigerian fund. That's why you can have paid the way you like. That's why you can put central salary to an unlimited figure. That is not how to run a nation. How to run a nation is that it is the component parts that plays a major role. Who are the component parts? Local government and state government. You are tying the hand of the state behind. And that is why some other governors wake up every day too and collect money from Abuja without contributing anything to the national cover yeah. and trying to assign the money anywhere. So that's the final solution. Once you limit, you, are, you, you allow the state to control their own resources, federal government says the assembly will not have access to Nigerian money again. Limit it so that we have patriotic Nigerians coming to serve. It's not going to be patriotism now. A senator complained to me that uh, in the rest of the world, people don't come to their parliament for salaries of uh, their children, and that's why they're asking for more salaries. I said, no. It started with you collecting big money. Before now, parliament will collect little money. People don't come to them for birthday money, mm. uh, school fees. So. Mm. It was at a point when your salary started increasing that people start coming to you. Yeah. So, to send away people from you, reduce your salary. All right. And yeah. you justify the money you don't have. Senator construct bridge now. Senator do road now. It's because the money oh, is there. Uh, the money, no, no, no. From personal oh, fund. Personal, oh, okay. Sponsor wedding. Yeah. yeah. Birthday. Is that what, the, what we have to go right. no, no. Quick, Quickly, quickly, the suspension of import duties for on food and drugs, and then maybe also the uh, salaries for CJN and Supreme Court justices. So that's CJN salary. Clarification. Is it monthly or it's annually. annually. That's that's annually. That's, yeah, that's, 65 yeah, million. That's, so it's that's, about five point something. Yeah, that's that's right because yeah. it's all in, 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 in human resource management. You need to people take play sensitive role in your organization. Yeah. Make sure that uh, they don't have suffer any deprivation. That's ethics. Ethics of organization is that uh, your salary, your staff must behave well. The organization must also behave well in the sense that you pay their salary on time give them adequate training and whatever they need. It's going to be an inducement for them to look away from any other thing. They are judges. So, yeah, I support it. Then, that's... So, senators may argue the same way. 
Don't say, what do senators do? Senators don't sentence people to jail. Senators don't ask people to go to... They don't to, sit they don't, for law. They don't, they don't try law, judge, uh, governors. They, they, they don't try laws. ministers. They don't want to be bribed into making the wrong laws. And this is 5 million. 5 million. That's not... Senator's salary is not 5 million. It's more than... So it's more than... No, 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 but this, this, could, this is so basic salary. It, it, doesn't, it just doesn't include their it, you know, allowances. It's why do... The, this, the, 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 the difference is why do... If you put yeah. side by side... No, I'm, ju I'm just saying that, but... You know, the 60 million we're talking about now is very likely their basic salary. It doesn't include the allowances um, and, and whatnot. Well, plus or minus 6 million at the end of the day. Plus or minus 6 more. million at the end of the at month. At the end of the month. But then again, is so it possible more. for the senators to also... Can I, maybe, don't you think there should we be a reform? We are not assertive enough. And that's why I'm saying reform that... reform of the entire... We are not assertive enough. That's why they are doing some of these things to us. And because of that, revolution is not uh, fashionable in the world again. Excuse me, that's why we are focused on structure. The structure will limit what they have. The access to Nigerian funds is the reason. When the budget is available to them, they look at what they have. They will fix responsible and reasonable salary for themselves. But when you have money from all the states, you gather all the money from the state, and you look at it, divide the money into three. You will fix big salary for, for yourself. But by the time states control their resources, their resources, nobody will fix that kind of salary. Where will it come from? But as long as federal government has the right to borrow, take loans from abroad, as long as we give... Yeah. The major part of Nigeria to the federal government to ta, instead of giving back, back back to state, they will justify that infrastructure is important. Yeah. Let's borrow money to do it. So this structure itself is an institution, it's a structure in itself not to make Nigeria work. So the import uh, suspension, duty suspension, is a temporary thing. The hunger we are passing through in Nigeria is Mamedo. There's no state in this country that cannot produce one crop. Even Lagos that has no land. Can Lagos is producing rice and fish everywhere. Go to go to Baragi, there's yeah. fish. Yeah. The president needs to give state a marching order. He will place the pipe, dictate the tone. If I give you certain money, can go through legislation. Just like education is going through legislation that a certain must percentage something. must go to education. Certain percentage of monthly uh, allocation but still should hide. go to farm. But there, there's a lot of shroud with, with people, you know, just stealing. That is the problem with this structure. That's the problem with this structure. If you come from an oil-producing country and you control your own resources, spend it on disco. Or my sis, spend it on disco. But his own state, the same oil-producing company, he turned his state into Mecca. That was what happened during the region. During the region, there were universities growing up all over Nigeria. Other started having universities too. So they start copying each other. They start. So your people will ask you questions, just like what we did. He said, my own money. Why did give us money? And I'm doing bridges with it. Other guys, why did you I said, why will I not talk? So that in the future, you want them to start accusing me that uh, so, once they control their resources, there will be basis for comparison. People will grow. It's a structural issue that uh, will, will put us back in line. So, in the immediate, let the president do what, whatever he wants to do about that because will largely survive on importation. Toothpick is importation. Ankarship is importation. The pure water you drink, the only commodity that is uh, local there is the water. Every other thing, the nylon, the chemical, is importation. Yeah. So, in the immediate, let's, then let's start working on how we are going to look at you from this importation. We can't grow if you continue that. And the day we want to suspend it, it's going to come with pain. So that we'll be our mind that uh, if we continue this, we are just postponing the day we are supposed to be fasting. Yeah. When it, the suspension comes, eventually, we will pay prices. Just like when we have state police and federal police, they'll be fight against jurisdiction. Yeah. The state police, this is my jurisdiction. So that fight yeah. will go on for about five years. Mm -hmm. We want to say that I don't want it again. Well, we are going to come back to NYPD, CIA. No, I, so I, that's, that's a, it. That's a <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope that, you know, the next time you stop by, we will talk more about the death of uh, civil society in Nigeria and why, you know, the NLC seems to be fighting alone and why Nigerians don't seem to even care about any of these <laughs> two groups. Um, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you again pretty soon. It's a pleasure being with you. Thank you. All right. Stay with us. Of course, you know, uh, we've shared with you what our guests have said this morning and also gotten a few calls to share with you, you know, what people across the country are saying. But let's uh, also share with you a little bit more of what Nigerians are saying. Well, these are not the best of times uh, for a former governor of uh, Kaduna State talking about um, um, Nasir El Rufai because he has just been accused of uh, a lump sum. I'm talking about 423 billion naira that's been looted during his tenure as governor of the state. 
And we've talked about this story right from the start here on Breakfast um, Central uh, from the morning up until now. We've looked at what the situation really is, what has led to these conversations, and again, not forgetting his response uh, to that statement. His spokesperson has come out to say that, no, he governed and ruled the state and ensured that his integrity was intact. But you Nigerians, what do you think? What are you saying? We've had few callers who have contributed on the show this morning, but let's go to the social media space. Let's see what Netzins are indeed saying. Starting off first is uh, a former senator himself who broke down in detail what, he, according to him, he had been saying years back concerning uh, the former FCT minister. Well, he says, for eight years, I stood alone telling the people of Kaduna state and country how our state was systematically looted by the governor and the criminal gang around him. He's talking to uh, former governor Nasser El Rufai. The people inside and outside the state were deceived with aesthetics and industrial scale propaganda. The wrecked, uh, they wrecked the economy of the state, enriched themselves and their families, destroyed the lives and livelihood of millions of people and used religion to divide our state. I was persecuted and many attempts were made on my life and that of my supporters. He went on to say that uh, many politicians in the state were silenced of the fear of arrest, uh, attacks uh, by thugs or having their properties confiscated or demolished. I refuse to be silenced. The Kaduna Assembly report is a vindication. So what it means here is Senator Sheul Sani is saying that he has finally and eventually been vindicated uh, by the Kaduna um, House Assembly uh, because he had been talking about it for the past eight years on how monies were being looted and moved out uh, from the uh, government coffers uh, by uh, the accused, known as the former governor of the state, uh, Nasser El Rufai. But let's move on and see how others are reacting. This is his own reaction, but see... What a former show boy says, uh, he says, another Yahaya Bello story. It will go down the drain. They will close the case like it never happened. Okay? That's what uh, 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 this responder is indeed saying, tweeting and saying, it's going to be the same thing we've seen. And that makes us ask a big question. Where is the white lion? Yes, according to the EFCC. Uh, we do recall what the EFCC uh, um, Hencho ahead uh, did say that if he doesn't prosecute the White Lion, he's going to resign. It's been months, no resignation. Everything has quietly died down and we've not heard from the White Lion. Neither have we seen a statement from, by the EFCC. Well, I think he has a point. Let's move on to the next one very quickly and see what Nigerians are equally saying. Uh, Farez uh, at M Farez underscore says... I stand with Malam Nasir El Rufai 100%. Kazuda State has never seen a good governor like him. I have a feeling that he's being attacked because he's one of the few Arewa politicians that care for the North. No matter who they are, no matter how powerful, they can never get to you, sir, by God's grace, inshallah. Uh, that's what he says. He says he stands with the uh, former governor. And in other words, he also agrees with what the former governor had said in his response, that it seems to be politically motivated. Let's see another tweet very quickly and see uh, what Nigeria is equally saying. Hamzat Kamal says, some of us who witnessed what happened during the APC National Congress and the presidential primaries will know that President Tinubu will surely deal with El Rufai. They will frustrate him out of the party and useless him politically. <laughs> well, that's what the tweet says. And do you recall what happened then? Well, just in case you did not, just bringing you back from memory lane, remember that uh, the former governor of Kaduna State, uh, Nasser El Rufai, was supposed to be a minister in the cabinet of President Bola Metinibu, but he did reject and turned it down and said he is no longer interested in being a minister. Rather, he would contribute his quota to the betterment of the society and, of course, the country as, at large. And that's the reason why, um, you know, if you look back and forth, also during the uh, pre-election times, he stood forth and spoke tough for the uh, president, uh, especially when we had issues with the CBN policies, which saw money being scarce. Well, uh, that should be all the tweets that we have here, except we have uh, one more. Let's take the last tweet very quickly and wrap things up. And this one is from um, Truthful and Unapologetic. Uh, he's replying a few persons who were tweeting, of course, tagging them. He says, if the EFCC is taking too long to arrest Yaya Bello, then Orofi 
has no case. What's your say? What do you think? Well, you're online here. You can see us. And most importantly, you have your comments as well. Why don't you comment and uh, let us know what your thoughts are concerning the latest case that's got to do with uh, the former governor of Kaduna State. Do you think it will be prosecuted? Do you think the FCC is laying too low uh, not to speak up, especially in the case of the White Lion and, of course, this recent case? Don't forget too, that there are many cases, many cases of looting that we've seen in recent times, especially coming from past serving governors or you could say ministers as well. That's all we're going to take on what you, Nigerians, are saying on social media. Osarge, that's all we're taking, most importantly, uh, on this entirety. But most importantly, Osarge, as we close the show, let's also be honest with ourselves. Um, we've seen um, former governors, we've seen past ministers... Yet nothing no, no actual has happened. Prosecution. So it's how do you say? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> just like the great uh, philosopher, um, <laughs> uh, what the black says, you know, <laughs> no more cho cho cho. You know, take, take action, you know, show, show walking. <laughs> show walking. <laughs> exactly. You know, but the thing is, you know, um, you know, I agree, and just like Mr. Lokoba said, you know, when they make all these accusations, there's no need shouting, no need, you know, going to the press. You know, you might as well, you know, take him to court. You are the governor of the state. You have every right and all the powers of the state to take him to court yeah. as the chief judge of the state. If there are, you know, financial crimes that he needs to answer, you don't even need to go to the FCC. There's of all, all the, you know, um, 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 uh, agencies, you know, with the police force that you can use to, you know, arrest him or at least, you know, take him to court. Um, and it, it gives credence to or gives, you know, life to those who say that it's all politics. You saw one of the tweets there, someone saying that, oh, you know, they, he knew that President Tinubu would frustrate Erufai and some of all of that, which is really just the PTSD Nigerians have, that any time that you see someone accused of mismanaging billions of naira for your state, you imagine, you first of all think it's politics, that he must be for, like, fighting a political godfather or somebody is coming for him. But it, the reason Nigerians think that way is because... To a large extent, that has been the case. Yeah. Because you realize that people would read their state, mismanage billions of naira in their state, and reach themselves, and they would not be asked questions except somebody decides that they want to, you know, to frustrate them. You know, and so because of because that has been the the, the history of you know um, prosecution in Nigeria with with regards or the fight against corruption. That's what Nigerians think of first, that it must be being, you know, frustrated by, by some political godfather. But in my, my view, it doesn't matter who it is. If it is a political godfather, if it is the new governor of the state, if it is his, you know, political, you know, enemies that are frustrated, it doesn't matter. If you've mismanaged money that is meant for your state, you should go to jail. Regardless of who it is that is orchestrating the case. Go to, the person should go to jail. But because we would never see that, what we're going to do is going to, we're going to have these conversations about this case. We're going to talk about Euro 5 for the next couple of weeks. Court, he wouldn't see. Jail, he wouldn't see. I mean, that's if he's guilty of these crimes. And that's the most frustrating part of these whole conversations, that it really just ends as banter. Mm. That's where it mm. ends. You know, we talk about it on the news. We, mm. People will talk about it in Kaduna State. Across the whole country, they will talk about it. 400 billion naira plus. Guilty or not guilty, but the, the thing is, there would, would, we always already know that there would n almost never be a proper investigation into the mismanagement of those funds. What? Well, sadly. It's we sad. don't even live in a, in a sane society enough for us to say, okay, even if funds weren't mismanaged, were these projects done, done to yeah, the yeah. extent that, you know, was, was, was required or I mean, stated? I, I mean, I'm sorry, it's, it's no-brainer. I, I do recall where we've had conversations with a few guests who have joined us in the course of years of, of being journalists, and there have been solutions that have been proffered. For instance, as a country, there should be a portal, a website, yeah. where you could see contractors, you could see jobs being given, you could see terms and conditions, and most importantly, you could see duration for completion. If we have all of these things, it also helps the public to know who to hold yeah. and how to follow suit. We did see the River State Governor currently come out to say, oh, the past projects that were commissioned were not paid for. And even Ubasani himself has come out to say that he inherited XYZ amount of, of debt. Of debt, yes. You know, so it's a lot. Anyway, on that note, uh, we're going to wrap up Breakfast Central today on a Thursday, hoping that you have had a great time yourself joining us. Well, the conversation continues online, so please... Go there, drop your comments, and let us know what you do think about these stories for today.
This is where we say goodbye. Thank you very much for joining us on Thursday morning's edition of Breakfast Central. We'll be back here again tomorrow. I am Osao Gie Ogmawa. And I'm Johansson. Have a safe and a beautiful day ahead.